Hello YouTube, it's Das Gregor for a Linux uh, for another Linux distribution first impression. In one of my last videos, I asked what distributions you guys would like to see me look at, install, test out. And the first person that came back was asking about Manjaro with uh, Arch Linux. So it's interesting because I was actually going to look at Chakra which used to be an Arch-based distribution, but evidently, according to their website, they have completely spun off and gone on their own way and don't use the same repositories any longer as Arch. But they're still Arch-based in the way that their distribution still has the same functionality using the same package managers, etc. But because... Uh, it was asked that I look at Manjaro. I decided I'd go ahead and throw that on there instead. And I'll look at Chakra maybe another day. Manjaro is a Austrian, French, German flavored distribution. As I said, based on the Arch Linux architecture. They have 32-bit, 64-bit versions. Their native is in the XFCE. However, they also have open uh, desktop, GNOME, Cinnamon, KDE, etc. I threw on it first the XFCE version since that's what their native uh, look and feel is. And to be honest, I, I wasn't impressed with it. And so I went ahead and threw on one of the development areas, um, KDE flavors. And that's what I have right here. It came with just a black background with absolutely nothing on there. So I threw a background on just so I'm just not looking at black. Uh, what we have is the uh, website for Manjaro explaining a little bit about what they are and what they're about. I was surprised about this version. Out of the box, it came very basic. And while, of course, it's stressing that this is a you know a version that is not thrown with a whole bunch of junk in it that it's very streamlined I'm just surprised that for instance little things like the browser I am I have chromium open right now I actually had to install that it came with conqueror as the browser which is of course KDE's browser slash file manager of yesterday and I'm not sure how many people still use it. I still love Conquer as, as a file manager more than I like it as a browser. So I went ahead and threw on Chromium just to have it running. I of course had to throw on the GUVC viewer, Kazam, a few other tools and things just to, to have what I needed. Luckily, as an experienced Linux user, I knew what to look for and knew what to grab. That's the one bad thing about starting with a distribution that's a streamlined very small distribution that doesn't come with a lot of stuff out of the box. The only reason why I say that is because as a new user a lot of times you don't know what you need, you don't know what you want, and you don't know where to look for it. And it's much better if you have it already out there and you can look at it, try it out, even have a couple different options to look at. You know. But if we look at this particular flavor, as I said, I've got KDE here, so we have the advanced menu right here. If we look at utilities, it's the typical stuff that you always see, of course, that's all there. Um, nothing too interesting, other than the fact that it actually has something from SUSE, the studio image writer. That's the first time I saw the image writer uh, installed from SUSE in a distribution. Of course, I've mostly looked at Gen 2 based distributions. If we go to the system, some of these things are duplicated. For instance, I noticed the Studio Image Writer is in the system as well as utilities. I suppose just in case you don't know to look in one, you see it in the other. Of course, it uses the Thunar File Manager, and you, of course, you can also use Conqueror. Typical things such as the console. K3B, Gparted. I didn't really use, I must have accidentally 
I got tapping on. I hate tapping on my laptop. I'm used to just using the mouse buttons and not worrying about it, but evidently I must still have tapping on. Easily, con easily configured within the system settings in the mouse to turn it off. But it, uh, everything else, uh, well at the top there, the add remove software, there's a couple different programs that they have available. I'm not sure if I highlight it, if it'll tell me. One is the pack manager. The other one, I believe this is the pack manager. The other one is another GUI interface for Pac-Man. If we move on to settings, typical, you know, Java right here, your Manjaro, Manjaro print systems. You know, unfortunately, I have a unique printer, so I always have to install the printer drivers manually and get those set up. And that's probably standard for a lot of us. That's one thing I'll, I'll be happier when later down the road there are more native Linux print drivers for most printers uh, that you can just pick it right from the list instead of having to go and find a way to get it installed. But I always, when I'm looking for hardware, make, make sure that it says it's Linux compatible and that there's some sort of Linux software already available for it so you don't have to start all over. In the office area, you of course have your LibreOffice. Now this, as I explained in the last one with uh, Uber Student, that they had branded it so that it had Uber Student's name in the library office. If we open up something in here, such as Calc, we notice that it just says library office. So there's no branding, which makes it a little bit easier if you're a developer or you like to twiddle around with the uh, software source code. You're free to do all that and still be able to redistribute it because since there's no branding on it. In the multimedia, of course, you've, you've got the K3B again. I installed GUCV Viewer for the uh, camera. Comes standard with Amarok. Just, uh, one thing to mention, on the VLC Viewer, it's missing a lot of codecs, so there are some things it just won't play. I tried to encode it in MP4 format, and those MP4 codecs just don't work. When I tried to upgrade it to a newer version, there were all kinds of dependency problems and with FFmpeg and newer versions of that that it says that it was looking for, the FFmpeg hasn't been updated yet, still in testing. So I've just left that it's just not working for right now. But there is the M player in here, which I don't see listed, but I know it's there because I was testing some of my other videos out with it and MP4 works fine within that. Inside of internet, SSH tools, VNC tools, blogging tools. I installed Chromium. Has some, a couple different instant messenger type tools. Interesting enough, I'd like to mention that it had Skype pre-installed, which is a nice feature since uh, Hotmail has gone away and even though you know most Linux users stay away from Microsoft type tools, Skype has been around for a while and it was a nice audio video type tool to be able to use to chat relatively well on Linux for the last couple of years before Microsoft purchased it. But luckily they haven't disabled the Linux side of the house on that. Also an interesting note to mention that it also comes preloaded with Steam on there. Now Steam in the past has been kind of a Ubuntu type um, software package I guess that's easy to install within Ubuntu but when you look at other flavors it wasn't as easy because they were really catering to I think the cost structure that Ubuntu has with their own internal store and hoping to kind of incorporate it with that but they've allowed you to forego all the headache of getting it installed and put it on there I haven't tested it yet I can. I do have a Steam account with a few games from way back when on there that I could look at and see if it works. But it's there. We move on with graphics. It does have the GIMP and a few image viewers and the this, this same stuff that you're used to seeing. 
in the games area it came with a few games not very many it does have play on Linux now play on Linux if you're not familiar is very similar to Steam here it allows you to install Windows based games in a wine environment and play them I haven't tested it on this box but I have used it in Gen 2 and some of my other flavors just to try it out we go on looking here yeah, just very few but you can always install your favorites that you find because you can always get them I did install Extreme Tux Racer I wanted to see how well the 3D graphics worked out of the box this is using the Nouveau drivers which are the open source free drivers for NVIDIA's driver package and they worked fine and then the only other thing is development and there really wasn't that much here QT4 stuff mainly some Java stuff and that was it. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do some of these videos because after a while KDE is KDE, XFCE is XFCE, GNOME is GNOME. And you look at these and you say how do I make this particular version of Linux stand out over the other? What makes it different? What makes it tick? Why should you try it over another flavor? Well, you really have to look at things that make it run. In this case, this is an Arch-based distribution, and therefore it uses the Pac-Man package manager. It uses the Arch repositories. And you have to know how to work your way around that. You have to make sure you understand where to find the applications you're looking for. One negative feature that I found about Manjaro when I first started it up and tried using it was that after doing an update on the system, it pretty much blew up Pac-Man, blew up all my security keys. I was getting uh, PGP errors, which stands for pretty good privacy errors, uh, all within the package manager. And I had to work on it for about an hour twiddling around with it, figuring stuff out, researching the information, till I finally figured out how, how to get Pac-Man to work again after the update. Now, you could say one of two things. You could say, you don't understand Arch, you don't, you've never used it, this is one of my, not my first, you know, you know round or rodeo with, with Arch-based systems. I have tried just basic Arch in the past. I guess I figured if it was going to be just as uh, difficult as Gen 2 was in the beginning, I'd rather stick with the Gen 2 based distribution because I've learned it, I know how it works. Which, which brings me to point number two. You know, Number two, I'm just used to Gen 2. I'm used to the way things are done in there and so I've learned all the ins and outs, all the tricks for Gen 2. I feel like within Arch, you have to learn them all over again you have to know it's it's not the simple OS like Ubuntu or some of these other distributions out there that are really made for first-time learners Arch and Gen 2 aren't for the beginner they aren't for the faint of art they aren't for the ones that think they want to dabble in Linux and want to try it for the first time they may say in here that it's a user-friendly distribution for first-time people I don't agree there are too many things about Arch and Gen 2 that are really meant for an advanced user who's not afraid to jump in there, not afraid to command line, and wants to learn it. You know, like I said, as I've been using Linux for over a decade now, and, and probably closer to 15 years, really. When I first started out with it, there was no GUI it was mostly just command line interface and I was just happy if after I was all done I saw the prompt and I didn't error out on the kernel build <laughs> and those days are way past and we've gone a long way from them but these distributions you know you gotta find out what what basic things do you like the most if you want simple hands off no problems I'd stick with the Ubuntu style series Linux Mint, for instance, is an awesome um, style, but there, of course, they aren't, they aren't a core. When I say a core, Arch, Gen 2, 
Ubuntu, Debian, those are just four to mention that are the core. Slackware is a fifth one. In fact, Slackware is one of the oldest ones that's out there. But to mention those five, those are the core base distributions. There might be one or two others, but those are the those are five of the main ones. And if, if you're really going to look around, you need to play with those distributions first and find out which one has the package manager that you like the most, which one maintains the packages better than the other, which one works with your hardware better. And then when you find the core distribution that you like the most, then you can play around with all the different other distributions that are based off that distribution. Some are more, some are better for video editing and, and audio. Some are better for desktop publishing. Some are better for, well, Pen2, for instance, a penetration testing environment, Gen2 based to allow for security testing and such. You know, they each have their own niche. They each have their own quirks, and they each have their strengths and weaknesses that you need to find which works best for you. For Manjaro, it's an intermediate version, in my opinion since it throws everything out there and it's ready but to run into a bug or a snag like I ran into and still took me an hour or so just to kind of sort it out and get it working I wouldn't say it's for the beginner uh, there were some real aggravating things with this and I'll, uh, this is one of the, the few arch GUI distributions I've looked at like I said I've always started out with command line interface with arch before and kind of started from scratch uh, so I don't know, I don't have that earmark to to kind of test this off, to, to base it based on something else. Maybe after a few more distribution tests I can do that. But anyway, I've rambled enough about this. Um, if you have any questions about Manjaro, or Manjaro, and I'm sorry. I know one time somebody yelled and screamed at me because I'd said, you bunt to. It ain't you bunt to, they told me. You down like some ignorant fool. It's not you bunt to. It's you boot to. It's like okay, yeah, you know. <sighs> dialects are dialects. It's just like I was watching the screensavers one time, and I guess now it's called Techzilla, and y'all out in Australia. <laughs> I know I get a lot of Australian watchers. I guess there's a word out there that that. Uh, we differ on. We say solder. You know, if you need to solder something onto a board, and I guess out there y'all say solder, or something similar to that. And I know they they had mentioned at one time how the all the flack they were getting from their uh, viewers about solder and solder. And uh, well, it's just the way we say things. You know, just like. The British have their Oz and we have our A's. Apple, Apple. <laughs> I don't know if they do that. Potato, potato, that's better. <laughs> Etc. Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm rambling. I need to shorten this. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, enjoy it. This is Manjaro. Manjaro. KDE. We'll talk with you later. Have a great one. Bye.